Hey guys, this is Team Whale Pants covering the second round of the Red, White, and Boom in Dayton, Ohio. So we have a pretty cool lead card with two locals in Gary Casa and Matt Blakely, and then two touring pros in Drew Gibson and Trevor Harbolt. This is a pretty cool lead card, and we start off on hole one. Uh, this is a typical, I like the sidearm play because it plays right into the hill, but there's a lot of uh, stuff that obstructs the view and you got to get under these low hanging branches. So we'll see what they choose to attack this hole. You definitely want to be close to the basket on this one since it's on a hill and we happen to have wind. Uh, I think both the men and women cards had quite a bit of a headwind so running that uphill putt was kind of tough. Matt Blakely is a super smooth golfer out of the Ohio area. He's opting for that backhand line, playing it into the hill. He comes up a little bit short, so he's going to have a difficult approach, but should be able to get up and down, maybe even give that putt a run. Dynamic disc sponsor Drew Gibson on the box. He's, he's also looking at the backhand line. I think he's throwing an Emac Truth here, uh, the Glow Emacs, I'm pretty sure. That's a pretty good line. A little high, Getting though. The branches. It's, and it's not too bad having that uphill putt to start out. You have a backdrop, so if you do miss, you just don't come up low and let that thing roll down. He shouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Gary Costa, another local player. All of them going for the backhand line. I haven't seen a sidearm, so it's pretty interesting and catches that tree down. But he might actually still have a pretty good look to get his two... Um, on this first hole, which is a great way to start your tournament. We got Trevor Harbolt. He's great friends with Dutch Napier out of Kentucky. He's awesome. He's been traveling around, uh, living the dream. Great dude overall. All four backhands. So That's surprising to see from open men, I think. Yeah, yeah. don't believe me in a sidearm, <laughs> but I got it. So we're going to see some putts, Blakely from a knee. Smart play, getting himself up and down. Got a nasty roll away though. Gary Costa, good bid. He'll be cleaning up his three most likely and moving on to the next one. Oh. You gotta want it. It's a scary run even, even looking uphill like that. Mm -hmm. I saw some really big numbers on this hole just because of all the roll aways. It happens so quick as well. Yeah. Getting it just Drew over the rim. Birdie. It's a great start for Drew. You know, he's pumped on that. Matt to clean up his par. No doubt. This dude's a great golfer. I got to play with him in the final nine, and he's a as smooth as they come. Hits, hits some really good lines all the time. Gary to clean up his three. Got it. And Trevor, on his way. <laughs> Runs up. So one birdie and a handful of pars. Three pars, not a not handful. Not a full handful. Not yeah. a full handful. But Drew jumping out to that early lead, but lots of golf left on this 19-hole course. So um, definitely uh, look to see these guys be a little more aggressive. This is hole two, um, 483 feet. It's almost a par four because of how low the ceiling is off the box. I heard box. it actually was a par four. So uh, there's OB on the left side, which makes this one really tricky. You have that, to be careful off the box. And that flower pot uh, that you saw just there is also OB. So Drew most likely lining up a roller here. This is a really good play. You lay it down, let that thing cut, and flip up late. What does Drew throw for a roller, do you know? I don't. I don't, but he puts this on a really good line. That's actually going to give a him a shot. look for a two. Comfortable three. Yeah. That's wonderful from Drew Gibson. Matt, I think he's also lining up a roller. He did in the final Saw a line. lot of rollers from MPO here. Oh, smooth oh, no. air shot. Oh, man. Is that going to kick him out of bounds? I don't know. We'll have to find out. That was an unfortunate kick. The air shot is totally there. It's um, the low ceiling really doesn't play in your favor. That's why uh, the ground play with the roller is awesome. But there's a bunch of stuff on the ground down the fairway. And the it's looking shot. like they're throwing the line they want, but the wind is really picking it up and throwing it into that branch. 
That's a great shot from yeah. Trevor. That's how you draw up the air shot, giving yourself at least a jumper at this uh, at for two and just smoothing you up and down. So you might have stayed in bounds. I'm not totally sure. Let's that was a great, in, great shot from Matt Blakely. Carry with that sidearm. This is a good play because it pulls you away from the OB on the left side. Um, it's just a lot of overhang. That's what we talked about. That's why the roller is really solid. Trevor, you know he's looking to run this to give himself a good chance. Gets himself up and down though. I think that tailwind or might have or the wind might have played a factor in that putt. Gary to save. Uh, his three goes a little over the top. This is Drew for his two, right? Mm-hmm. That roller shot. Oh man. There must be some wind dropping these discs down because looked like one of them corrected and it yeah. went way over the top. So it might not look like there's a lot going on, but we really did have some some weird wind happening out there. Yeah. It seemed it, to be kind of swirly. It's it's definitely one of those courses that you could be on a hole that is facing in the same direction and have a completely different wind because just because you're in a different spot in the park. Um, cleaning up threes, this is a good score to get on this hole. You don't, uh, you definitely don't want to be walking away with any big number. Um, so these guys, just happy. These, this is the only basket they played on. This is a predator basket, so it's, uh, you won't see many more of these. They're There's a couple on the course for bad. casual play, but generally they're all, what are they, Mach 3s there? All Mach 3s, old or Mach 3s. And I, from what I hear, the, uh, the veteran is on its way to Belmont Park, so I'll be looking forward to seeing those. Next year when you see this coverage, they'll have veteran baskets out there. Now, hole three is a tunnel off the box, but then it's a uh, it's basically a pretty flat hyzer shot. You throw it flat through the gap and hyzer through. You can actually cut through the trees on the left uh, to this basket that's on uh, kind of like a step. If you come in early, you've got that tree to contend with on the left, which is actually a little tough to get up there since it's such a raised basket. Mm -hmm. This is a really, really well-designed disc golf hole where it... it Forces you to hit the gap, hit a good angle, and um, make a good disc selection. Matt hits early. He's going to have to really start to scramble to get his up and down for his three. He's off to a slower start than he'd like. Wow. Trevor getting that one low. A stable shot. He should still be able to get up and down from over there, though. Mm-hmm. Let's see if Gary can correct off the other guy's lines. Gets that one out there. It needs to get some fade. That's a pretty, pretty uh, typical shot on this hole. If yeah. you can get it a little bit higher, uh, you'll get that fade right towards a basket, which He's is really got nice. Got a chance for a two at that. Yeah, Matt, great pitch up to get his three. That's that shot probably looked easier on camera. Come get on, it. Trevor. Oh man, that looks so good. <laughs> These baskets can be so dirty. By the way, hitting some nubs. Yeah. Gary think was it's going in, hits all the chains, but it still comes out. Mm -hmm. Gary was definitely putting a run on that, especially after the four on the first hole and Just pays the price. Bit, yeah. uh, but all respect for making that run. You definitely you're in the final round of a tournament. You don't you don't uh, pump the brakes just yet. He's definitely trying to make a move. Good cleanup from Matt there. Gary not too happy with that four. Well, look at Trevor, he's just bouncing around. He's such a happy guy. He's a great guy. Uh, definitely, if you ever played on a card, he's he's all about having a good time and, he, and he's a true pleasure. Hole four. This is probably one of the most must get holes. Yeah. I think this is actually, um, it plays a little bit shorter. It's a really routine putter shot for me on the backhand. Tina throws a nice stable driver and gets it up there. Honestly, um, for MPO, the biggest trouble on here is making sure you don't go too long because the long of that basket is going to be out of bounds. Same with that flower pot again on the right side. Um, I'm going to give him a putt. Good shot from Drew. I think he's throwing that Captain America harp. Looking good. 
They played a CTP on this hole too. I don't remember. Yeah. Here in uh, it was CTP prizes. <laughs> by the time we got up there, it was. Oh, oh man. He just got it. <laughs> is that good? Great shot. Watch this. This is. I mean, this is how you Text draw it up. right there. Nice little ground play. Scoots right under the pin. Perfect. Don't shot. hit your head. Great shot from Matt. Trevor's gonna try and follow that same line. That's looking pretty good. Um, you can opt for the driver here. It's a, it's actually a good play. You're just hanging out Something a little stable. bit wider. You just got to make sure it's just it's all about distance control on these on these shots. So make sure this doesn't go too long. There's uh, there is a flower pot OB right, but it's really hard to reach. And then there's an OB long. So this these is guys all. This is 25 feet. Do you think it's actually that far? Uh, I don't know. I think, I think the distances might be. <laughs> the distances might be different on that this. almost came out. So. Gary to get his birdie. There you go. That almost wanted to fight out. Yeah, these baskets yeah. are very well used, so you're probably going to see some spit outs. I've heard about uh, a couple out there. So. So many out there. <laughs> <laughs> these, I mean, it's it just happens with these old baskets, and you just you you know that going in, your putt has to be as clean as possible. Drop in CTP, um, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Getting the star frame, that's always very good. Well, Drew's um, really killing it right now. Boom. We're on to hole five. This is one of the more iconic holes that it plays to a, a peninsula. So right on that tree on the left, there's OB. Over there on the trees on the right, you can see that red line of OB. And this uh, they've perched this basket beautifully up on this stump. There's OB long too, actually. Yeah. It's This is a tough one. I think Drew might be opting for the big hyzer line. So you have to have incredible amounts of power to execute this shot, which... Yeah. He does, <laughs> and there's a lot of wind out there, as you can see, but this gives him a really comfortable look. Is that in? Getting the American, American flag. flag. That's good He news. ain't surrendering anything. <laughs> um, but this is, it, it's, it's slightly downhill the whole way as well, so it is really easy to run long. Um, this is a uh, more traditional line, the little flip up flex shot. And Matt Blakely making this thing work. Hopefully it sits down yeah. a little long, but he'll have a look. What a shot. I feel like an easy three on this hole is the best thing you can ask for. Getting a two is kind of just a bonus. Let's get some Come fade on. out of this one, and this is looking great if it does. Hangs up long. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. It keeps going. <laughs> Take it easy, muscles. Now that's a uh, that's that's so easy to do, and he didn't even look like he threw that all that hard. It's just like I said, the downhill play. Some carry with the wind and everything. It happens. Gary also looking a similar line to Trevor. That needs to, Stable as we up. saw, check the brakes. Settle, baby. Settle. Get oh, that flag. Oh wow. Oh Almost bomber the town, same dude. Shot. That's crazy. But. These guys will hopefully give a good bid for their three save. If not, just make sure you don't take any extra strokes. This is uh, very similar to DPNL, the other course that we played out at McGregor Park, where there are a lot of birdies out here to get. So you just have to stay uh, positive, knowing that you're not going to um, lose too many strokes. You just have to stay at it. Drew for a two. Come out. You gotta give it a run, but that's a tough spot to be way over there. Blakely for two. Good bid. Uphill putt. Just needs to clean up here. Save some strokes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, he's a good putter. Watching him in the skins match. Just he's just a good golfer all around. 
Drew for his three. He's not too worried about that. Just happy to move on from this hole. A little discussion about who's out. Or just funny things, who knows. Gary cleaning up that bogey. That's it. If, you know, it's the same thing. If you hit first tree, you go out of bounds. Taking that bogey is fine. You just lick your wounds knowing that you're going to be able to make it up on the next couple holes. Yeah, if you go out of bounds on that hole, you're pretty much expecting a four. Um, all those OB lines are pretty far from the basket, so it's going to be harder to get your three, especially on a raised basket. Hole six. This little guy. It's pretty short hole. Uh... Double Mando, uh, the two outside trees, the left one you see here, there's another tree on the right side. So you actually have two tunnels that you can throw through. You can throw the overstable through the right side or the straight with some fade through the middle gap. And I actually prefer the straight with some fade. Gives you an easy look at it. If you go too far left or right, it's really not trouble. You still have a putt as long as you get through those. Well. Well, that's how you do that. <laughs> so a wonderful um, shot from Drew Drew just Gibson. showed you how to do it. That's the shot. Saw a lot of putters on this hole. Um, so it's another one of those that you can uh, overthrow the hole. So having a good distance control shot is what you want here. That with some more height is a really good shot. Just gets a little low. A little short, yeah. He's going to have a putt. Um, so we'll see what he can do from there. Gary Costa. Throwing that same line a little low. Get some glide. So all of them are going to be putting. Drew's going to hit his head. Um, <laughs> that seems seems good. Do it. Uh, if you can see, this basket is kind of leaning that way. So leaning. it almost leaned away from his putt, like it dodged it. Great hit oh, wow. from Gary. That was a good catch too. <laughs> yep. That's it. We put that in with some hard authority. putt. Yeah, he's like, I'm not missing anything. I don't know if I noticed that basket was leaning so much. It's really leaning in the <laughs> video here. So they, it's it's great that the veterans are on their way, so we'll see those very soon. So we can be happy, and hopefully these poles get reset. And this park looks even better than it already does. Uh, I know a lot of people out here, if you go just up the road to Hazy Shade, there's so many great things going on in this town. So if you guys are ever in the Dayton area, definitely check it out. Three birdies in a par, That's not too bad. That's pretty typical, I think. You're either going to see all birdies or maybe one person just missed their putt. That, that hole doesn't play that hard. This is a fun hole. Um, it's either a turnover or a roller. It could be a sidearm. Um, the basket is hidden over to the right behind all these trees. Um, and all of those branches right there are pretty low ceiling. So once you get up there, um, you got to be pretty low. And... Of course, it's a death putt, so... It's a slope straight to OB, so it is really easy to find. Drew opting for the sidearm. That's a really good play, I think. That's probably not what he wanted, but... At least it's uh, coming back in and not heading for the road too aggressively. Same look from Blakely. He's trying to push that one a little bit farther out there. That's oh, pretty routine. Perfect. What a shot. Great shot. That's exactly what you're looking for. If you draw it up... That's what you're looking for. The funny thing is, on this hole, during practice, Patrick Brown and Leslie Todd and Cam Todd uh, had their discs stolen off on this street. hole. Off the street. because they went long and somebody uh, walked by, picked them up. And then there was people during the AM side of the tournament on this who were, they were driving by and picking them up in the car. So we had some people posted up to make sure that doesn't happen. Trevor hits a little early here. Um... He should so, still be able to scramble as long as his layup's all right. Yeah. It's, this is one of those that you don't want to push it too far and leave yourself short. Hold up. That hill gives a lot of ground play. That should be okay. He's got a, he's got a look. He's got That's, a tested look. Yeah, at least it's uphill and not at <laughs> the OB. Mm -hmm. That helps. True for two, right? Yeah. Running it. Oh. Ooh. That's out of bounds. That's exactly Maybe. what you're afraid of. Maybe not. Roll back in. <laughs> Go on. No, that's gone. She gone. She gone. <laughs> Dang. Well, again, that's it's a risky take. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something. Uh, if you're if you're feeling it on the day, you definitely run those putts. So. 
Doesn't cost him too many. Yeah, just a bogey from there. That's that's not so bad. At least he got his bogey. Trevor to clean up his par. Oh. Just a little off. It's hard on these uphills if you haven't had one of those uphill putts at all yet. Gary cleaning up. It's good stuff. Blakely finally gets to tap out <laughs> after that stellar drive. I mean, like I said, this is, this is a great hole to get. It's, I mean, as you've seen, we're going to see a handful of strokes uh, exchanged on this hole. So this is one of those holes that um, uh, definitely you see some swings on. A couple bogeys, a par, and a birdie. Not too bad. I mean, that's that that's seems tough. right for that hole. It's it's a crazy hole. If you play it smart, you're going to be either rewarded or just walk away with your par. But if you get ballsy, mm -hmm. <laughs> hole eight. Uh, it's another. It's very similar to hole three, where it's a pretty kind of uh, flat hyzer shot through the trees. You got to miss some stuff. You got to make your. You got to hit your line. You have to have a good height angle. And you got to get the fade. So um, most of these players are probably going to just throw a good, smooth shot um, with something overstable and let it work its way towards that basket. Blakely, looking smooth as ever. Get in it. Woo! -hoo. Great shot from him. Um, definitely, he's getting uh, put a good stretch of holes together, getting into the end of this front ten. Have you seen anything other than a backhand hyzer here? Uh, I think the last time I was here, I saw somebody throw a sidearm, but that it was a lot more cleaned up on that side. So, okay. Drew saws this one off. He's going to have a longer look than he'd like, but he, he can definitely make putts from there. Um, but I think with how everything is playing now, it's definitely a backhand all the way. I was Trevor gets a lot other lines, but I just don't think there are any. <laughs> nah. It's a it's a it's a good golf hole. It's pretty traditional. It. Oh, oh that was so close. Let's see if Drew can uh, clean up from distance. Same thing. In the rim. Cost up for two. Though. Got it. Yep. He's been putting with authority, and yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> paying off for him, which is good. Drew to clean up. Oh no. No, Mach 3's, no. It hit a little high, but it definitely should have stuck. Two That's stroke swing there. That's a great birdie. You know, Blakely's feeling real good after that. Um, especially, I mean, even though if you're just playing the course, picking up your two here is good, but when you know your card mate has just uh, taken a four, you know that that's uh, a pretty big momentum shift, so... He Blakely. had a big jump off that rim, Drew did, so mm -hmm. that would have changed everything. Not too bad. Now, hole 9 is another hole similar to hole 7 where we're playing back towards that road and that uh, that big hill. This one's a lower ceiling. It's the blind hallway. from the tee pad. You can't yeah. see the basket. This is... A, this is one of my favorite holes on the course. It requires such a good shot uh, to get it. And I, th I like the sidearm play here like Blakely does. Um, you can get it up and get it to flex. But really, you want to chew up as much distance Ooh. as possible. There's a whole um, card over there. <laughs> hey, it's you. Hey. <laughs> I know uh, him. As long as you can get down here and you don't have a death approach, you're in good shape. Uh, having a death approach doesn't feel very good on this hole because, man, you have to get the you have to get the distance perfect. You really don't want to hit early because if you do, that upshot is really intimidating. To get it to stay by the basket is nearly impossible. So you want to be close enough at the basket. You're either putting at it or um, you have a really simple, no power layup. Settle. Come on. Great shot from Trevor. I mean. When he was on the tee pad, he wouldn't have drawn it up any different. That it's pretty much as perfect of a shot as you can get. If you're throwing the backhand, you're just hoping that you get a little drop and catch uh, catch the stuff and slow down. That's going long. Well, Drew does true things <laughs> and throws, throws it too far. <laughs> um, he tends to do that, but he's going to be bummed here. It's going to be a long comeback putt. 
to try and pick up his par. So this is the this is the approach we're talking about. Gary laying it up. You want it to land soft, um, but even if you get it right under the pin, the odds of it rolling down still another 30 feet are pretty large. Good bid from Trevor. I mean, it's pretty much all you can do from down there is huck it up there and give it a chance. Come on. Mm. Drew is really hoping for that one. Good bid from Blakely. He's, that's kind of where you want to be if you can be, unless you're parked. It's being level with that basket, so you take away the elevation. Good cleanup from Gary, getting that three, especially from that crazy spot. Trevor to clean up his three. All day. Yeah, but on this hole, on these holes that play to these hills, it's it's a lot of distance control. So you can, <gasps> oh no, likely giving Drew a lifeline and Drew comes <laughs> <laughs> skipping down like a little kid on Christmas to I know mean, that he didn't lose, a str didn't lose a st another stroke to keep it within striking distance. Yeah, that was a tough spit, strong side. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit right, but again, these Mach 3s are just well used. Yeah, they're not going to catch everything. So hole 10 is a, another shorty blind from the tee. There's two lines. You have a sidearm and you have the hyzer. Um, if you have a good sidearm, it's pretty easy. Just get it up in the air, let it fade right to the basket. The hyzer is really comfortable there. Throw something nice and overstable and let it work over there. It's very easy to go in the bush long. And that's Gary way left. Nah, yeah, he's gonna be he's playing the other fairway. Yeah, which is fine. It's in the open. Um, honestly, it's not a bad play. Um, you're just probably not gonna get your birdie. Here's the hyzer line. Trevor's throwing it. That should be working nicely. Don't, don't hit that. <laughs> Was working nicely until that tree decided to be rude and get right in the way. Guardian tree. So, obviously, there's a straight shot at it See, that I've never shot. seen. <laughs> FPO throws that shot. Most okay. most of us do, not everyone. But um, the tough part is you need the disc to keep going dead straight. Um, and to get anything to go that straight in the first place usually is uh, going to hyzer out at the end. So, at least two of them have a chance at a birdie. So, no sidearms, again. No sidearms. <laughs> Clearly Eric's a fairly sidearm dominant player nowadays. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> this basket's fun because even if you're 90 feet away, you can run it. Um, as long as you don't get in the junk behind it, there's a slope that'll catch your disc for you. <gasps> Another one. Blake Lee's going to be uh, scratching his head and going back to the drawing board after those two, um, knowing that he needs to just... Focus in Get those and putts make in those basket. putts, and it's it. It all starts with one. Like even this putt, just making it, getting your stroke smooth, can mean the world of a difference uh, when it comes to it. So we'll see Blakely rebound. Uh, I know it. He's a, it's a pretty veteran golfer. He's a thousand rated, so he knows what he's doing. As long as you don't let those little missed putts get in your head and keep trucking, knowing you know what you're doing. That's uh, all. It's most important. So that's the first part of round one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Big thanks to our sponsors, Boom and Dynamic Discs. And huge thanks to Jomez and all the media they had out here at Red, White, and Boom. This everybody was... worked so hard at this tournament. It was great to see everybody out there. Um, Boom, Dynamic really put everything they had into this one. Yep, and thanks everybody for being out here. Uh, yeah, keep on hucking and uh, Go support whale pants uh, whenever you can. A whale.com. A whales.com. <laughs> Boom. Thank you, Jomez. <laughs> <laughs>